Hi, I'm Ralph Langner, and in this video I'll tell you what the five most efficient OT security controls are. But first, let's define what efficiency really means. According to dictionary.com, efficient means performing or functioning in the best possible manner with the least waste of time and effort. And that's exactly what we want to achieve in Lean OT Security. We want to minimize waste and we want to maximize value. And here's what that means in concrete terms. You don't need to do risk assessments or penetration tests or threat intelligence monitoring in order to conclude that these controls perform well in your environment. Actually, they perform so well that they would have blocked any cyber-physical attack on the record from Stuxnet to the Triconex attack. So without further ado, let's look at the five most efficient OT security controls in reverse order. Number five, contingency plans. Do you think that you will never fall victim to a cyber attack? Serious question, just think about it for a second. If your answer is no, then you better have a good plan on how to clean up the mess. Because here is what happens if you have to improvise in the case of a cyber attack, then it's predictable that your performance will be subpar. So you better have a plan well ahead. Or in the words of the famous investor Peter Thiel, a bad plan is better than no plan at all. And that would mean things like where are the backup files for this specific system? Can a specific computer be rebooted during production? Or do you have to shut down the production process first? All the various specifics that can well be answered ahead should be contained and readily available in good contingency plans. Number four, secure remote access. If you want to take advantage of remote maintenance or uh, remote condition monitoring, all the nice interesting functions that also come with the so-called IoT, then you better make sure that your remote access options are well secured, that they are monitored tightly. Because as we have seen, just for example, in uh, respect to the uh, cyber attacks in Ukraine in 2015, 2016, as we have seen in the case of the Triconex attack, <coughs> remote access links are uh, a pretty attractive means of, for cyber attackers to infiltrate your facility. So uh, let's get a little bit more concrete here. If you have a jump server, that means that somebody from the outside can jump into your DMZ and from there directly access any critical ICS components, then you might rethink your architecture because in fact you don't have DMZ at all. A real DMZ only allows inbound access from both sides. So what you would want to check out, for example, is moving to the so-called rendezvous server in, in case uh, instead of a jump server which allows you to um, monitor and control remote access much tighter and you should do that especially for critical systems such as those which are uh, which have any safety functionality number three blocking egress traffic I just assume that you already have firewalls in place to segregate your process networks from the enterprise network and from the internet because otherwise you will probably not be watching this video. But here is a common flaw that we see in firewall configurations and that is that there are only rules to filter the inbound traffic, inbound to the process networks. Whereas uh, in the other direction from the process network uh, to the enterprise network, for example, everything can pass through. And that's a very serious misconfiguration because if you think back, all the major malware campaigns, all the uh, uh, the, the large scale attacks, uh, energy, energetic bear, black energy, etc., they assume a uh, attack infrastructure where the infected systems in the process network communicate outbound to the command and control servers. And that is very easy to block just by using proper egress filter rules, which makes sure that anything that goes 
from the process network outbound can only reach legitimate systems. Number two, no email in process networks. What is the most important infiltration vector for any ransomware attack, malware campaign or um, cyber espionage? It's spear phishing. And here is a very simple way how you can make sure that the infected files or links that are associated with that bogus mail that you receive won't affect your critical systems in a process network, but you simply don't allow access to your email server from the process network. And that is so easy to do these days because all you need to accomplish is to, to use um, or to put the, uh, the desktop PCs or also or whatever machine that you use to, to access your email in a separate network. And that can even be in the simplest case, uh, just reside on, on a different VLAN than your process networks. And this way you make sure that any malicious stuff that is contained in the bogus email will not affect any systems in the process networks. Very simple, very effective. You, you can still use your email. You can still use that very same desktop that's sitting on your desk. Just make sure that it is residing on a different network. Number one, the absolute winner, application whitelisting. How can you assure that even after a successful infiltration of your process networks that no malicious files can be executed on your critical systems? Well, there's, a, there's a very simple answer for that. It's called application whitelisting. So, and, and that's a technology that's pretty much com complementary to uh, antivirus and it works uh, using a whitelist as the name implies. And just if, if you haven't heard about it, just Google this stuff. It is much more effective than your antivirus, I would go so far and advise you once that you have installed application whitelisting, get rid of, of the damn antivirus. You won't need it any longer. So go for application whitelisting, especially and definitely for your engineering stations. Your engineering stations are uh, among your most critical computer systems in process networks. Uh, experience has shown that the attackers know this, if you think back to Stuxnet, if you think back to the Triconex attack. So they are um, at, at, in, uh, at, let's just say, number one on the attacker's wish list. You, you want to make sure that these systems cannot execute malicious code, even in the case that your process network is infiltrated. And the way to make it happen is by using application whitelisting. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the other stuff that we do at langner.com.